Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach and meditation coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Actually, this is our, um, we're doing a series with Jesse Lucas here. Yeah. And again, guys, welcome to the Life's a Shuffle episode. This is uh, Ron Johnson, your life coach. And this is the first time Jesse's coming back again. And you guys probably heard, heard her story in our first uh, podcast with her. And we decided to invite her back. And she was more than gracious to come back and talk about her business and what is embodied movement? Um, you know, as me and Gloria and other people out there are life coaches, we talk about the mind and power in the body. And now I realize a lot more is happening. So Jesse's back again on a, creating a series of empowerment. Definitely, um, she definitely has all the knowledge you need to know what that means. And, um, well, I'm saying too much. Jesse, welcome back again. And thank you for being here. Hi, Ron. Hi, Gloria. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. I love talking with life coaches, mindset coaches, people who are on a mindfulness path and have tools in that uh, to to dig into this embodied movement part. So I am super happy to be here. Yeah, likewise, Jess, we're super happy to have you here again. So, you know, this is a little bit different than our normal podcast. So, so kind of t- try to take us through a journey of ground zero. What is embodied movement? What does that mean? That is a really great question to start with. So for those of you who don't know or might have missed the original episode where I told my story, so my background, I'm a yoga teacher and a personal trainer. I'm a mom. I am a a, a lifelong learner, and I love helping people feel better in their bodies. And one of the things I realized along the way, my my own health and healing journeys and working with a lot of bodies along the way in the, the past 20 or so years is that we humans have a tendency to kind of disconnect. There are so many forces that bring our attention outwards, Um, everything from just a normal, busy day when we have life's regular responsibilities, our to-do lists, our tasks, our, our fulfill our expectations, down to the the depths of kind of really integrating life's experience from from the very, very beginning. And sometimes, uh, if you know anything about epigenetics, even maybe from before the very beginning of your life, but all of the impacts, the, the emotional impacts, the mental impacts, the stressors that we have to deal with and that create change for us, change in our physical health, our emotional health, our mental health. And then, of course, there's there's the layering of just current events. What is the environment? You know, before we hit record, we were talking about the crazy weather that's going on uh, around the world right now. Uh, the the current stressors of you know 
life events that are that are happening, global events, and all of these things, there's so much sensory input that affects our nervous system, affects our emotional patterns, affects our neuropathways. And this can be very fragmenting. And this can kind of create blocks and barriers and ultimately, like I said, this disconnection or disembodiment if we're if we're talking embodiment language. So all of that to say embodied movement is really a tool. So the, using the tool of physical movement to kind of bring yourself back together, to kind of pull together those fragmented parts, to transmute some of those blocks and, and barriers that have kind of created the, the separation that we might feel in parts of ourselves or even bring sensation back to, to numbness. It Embodied movement is really a way to come back to a sense of wholeness. And as I know, we will talk about empowered health. Mm, okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's great. I mean, I'm, I'm curious. So I think we talked about this a lot on the last podcast is that being life coach, mindset coach, I'm always an impression the mind controls the body, right? So, but what do you mean by empowered health? Like is the body comes first in the mind or mind and body? What, what, tell me what you think. So I look at this as just kind of opening up the other direction. It's it's not an either or. Uh, you guys are on the right path with with how much control the mind does have over, um, you know, our, our body processes, our our decisions, and that you know how our how our life comes. I mean, a, a good example of that is you know if I talk start talking about you know a really savory food or your favorite you know like lemonade you get at the fair or something like that, your body might have a response. Your mouth might start watering. You might have that kind of craving feeling. So, you know, an emotional response. There, the, the, the other direction works as well. If I tell you to kind of like lift up your posture a little bit, take a few deep breaths and smile, that will trigger a reaction that affects the actual emotions that you feel in this moment, the actual kind of neurons that begin firing. So both directions are correct. I, I just, it's been kind of underutilized how much and how simple, how simple it can be and how powerful and effective it can be to use some of these physical techniques, this, this, body influencing the the emotions in the mind. So I think empowered health is when we have access to all of it, access to both directions, access to the information that's in our mind patterns, that's in our physical patterns and our sensations so that we can kind of decode that information and then know how to respond to it appropriately, know how to use it correctly for you know what we want to feel. I love that the word empowerment has the word power in it. It's generative. It's something is fueling that power. And so through embodied movement to empowered health, we're using the, the body's systems, the physical movement that you can produce to generate that power for that that sense of hey I got this I I know how to be me I know how to to deal with this stressful moment I know how to really soak in this beautiful moment on you know on the other end of things I know how to navigate my my day or my decisions in ways that really truly are aligned with myself, my true, true self. Wow. That's, uh, that does sound powerful. <laughs> we talked about going to the fair and salivating over that, you know, lemonade, if it's a hot day, I thought about the smell of warm chocolate chip cookies homemade and I'm salivating <laughs> over those cookies. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mouth started watering. I was thinking of funnel cake. Mm -hmm. And that that's the, the biggest thing. And I was just thinking about when you're talking about that, because 
that's what I do. So if I go to a fair and I start smelling, you know, let's say funnel cake, corn dogs, whatever they have there, it, it's just what I do. I want it, but then I tell myself I don't need it. I want it because I just I just want that taste if I have sweet tooth. So it's almost like I'm taking a step forward and then taking a step back. It's like I'm pushing myself forward. I'm pushing myself back. I love, Gloria, that you just brought up that example. So that push forward, step back, push forward, step back, that creates a friction. Yeah. Right? So you can just imagine two, kind of two things, you know, rubbing against each other, two opposing things. Like I want the funnel cake. I don't. I want the funnel cake. I don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? Um, you know, and, and that I don't maybe comes with like, oh, I know it's not good for me or it's, you know, not, doesn't have the nutrients or I know it's going to make me feel like crap later, you know, wh- whatever is the, the I don't part. Well, that friction can be very draining. It's, it's mentally stressful. It takes a lot of energy. If we're talking about empowered health, that friction can really deplete your energy, and frankly, it can make you grumpy. <laughs> I know that, that that's kind of what what happens to me when I'm kind of in a in a battle like that with myself. So, one of the things that I teach through embodied movement is to create a physical shift. Like, for example, and I, I brought up that fair thing because we're taking the kids to to a fair tonight, and I'm already kind of having my own stress and anxiety. <laughs> about that. I'm an introvert, I'm an empath, like going into crowds. I mean, that's that, that's a whole nother bit. Um, but so you could, right, if you're you're in this environment and you are confronted with something that may not really be aligned with your truths. And, and that's not to say you can't give yourself permission to indulge in pleasures, right? That's right. not at all what I'm saying. But like if your truth is really like, hey, this this funnel cake is really not, it's, it's really not what I want for my truth. But instead of going down that friction, like if you can just, okay, I smell the funnel cake, and like feel your feet on the ground and, you know, you're at a fair, so you're probably wearing shoes, but feel your feet on the ground and then feel the strength of your legs. And then kind of like from deep in your core, kind of pull yourself upright, take a deep breath. All of a sudden you are, you are standing in a whole new posture. And I'm talking like little micro adjustments that take milliseconds and like nobody can see from the outside, you know? So this is like a non-equipment, non-time-taking non-obvious, you know, be a weirdo in the crowd kind of thing. Just these little micro adjustments that you can kind of physically light up from the ground up that all of a sudden, by the time it hits your brain, you're operating from a different place. You're not the person who's struggling to deny the funnel cake anymore. You're standing in a different powerful place of like, oh, that smells really good. I remember happy memories having that when I was a kid, but this me, this me doesn't actually want that. Does that make sense? It does. It totally does. I actually just tried what you just said. I'm going to have to try that practice outside next time I'm in that um, situation. But well, I, what, yeah, no, go ahead. What, what's cool about it is that, you know, this, this funnel cake example um, could be, could be anything. It could be, you are confronted with a person who you you have trouble communicating with. It could be you enter a situation that brings up fear or triggers a trauma. I mean, this, this the level of this can get very deep. You could be approaching an athletic event that you want to perform really well at. And just those micro adjustments of shifting posture, shifting your presence in your body can create a whole new cascade of biochemical events and allow you to really be, be like I said, stand, standing in a new place, coming from a new place, operating from a new place. Yeah. You know, you know what happens in that process? Because um, I'm thinking to myself, you know, um, I just got back from vacation, right? From Cabo, we were talking about that earlier, and it's like, okay, when I was in Cabo, it's all inclusive, so it's like I can eat whatever I want, drink as much as I want, and how much to deserve as much as I want. All you can eat twenty four seven, pretty much. But I saw what happened for me 
is when I used to go on vacation, I used to be very worried about my body. I want to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm a typical person going on vacation before. I'm going to do cardio for a month, make sure I lose 10 pounds, I'd be look shredded and have abs. When I'm on vacation this time, I actually didn't care about that anymore. So when, I talk, when we talk about empowerment, and I was thinking about myself on vacation, is that how can before I used to give so much power to the way I look, make sure I have six-pack abs, and what happens is that you go on vacation, you're going to eat whatever you want, you're going to maybe drink a little bit, whatever you decide to do, you feel so guilty coming back. This time, I didn't care about that. I ate what I wanted to, drank what I wanted to within reason, and I came back just fine. What, what happened there? Oh, gosh. I lo- First of all, I love that. Um, you know, there, there there's a whole range. There's a whole spectrum of being, you know, outwardly focused of, okay, these are the things I need to do and, and prepare and I need to appear this way. And then, you know, all, all the way on the other end of the spectrum, you know, a lack of care. And I mean, I'm going to go past where you you were, which sounds really beautiful and, and come back to that because that's the kind of balance we we, you know, probably want and, and strive for, but all the way on the other end of the spectrum is a, is a lack of care where you're almost again disembodied, disconnected, dissociated from from your own truth. And I think what you described, and and Ron, I know we we've chatted about your your journey of kind of becoming more self aware. Is all of those bits and pieces, all of that work that you have done kind of came to life in this moment where you could just be present, be present in the moment, be present in joy and be present to just experience without stress and strain being pulled in other directions so that you could have that, that Cabo experience with, without the, the pulls of expectations, whether they were internal expectations, external expectations that pull you away from that present moment. So the things that you have done of recognizing what is true for you, what is important to you, what I know you have created, you know, changes in the way you approach your body practices and your physical fitness practices to be more, um, more self-care aligned and less, uh, kind of, you know, externally driven to, to get external results. So all of those things, and, and this is where embodied movement becomes really, really effective and really cool is it's, it's an accumulation of small decisions over time. I mean, the, the, you can create a very powerful impact moment, you know, kind of like when I described the lemonade and started salivating, same thing, you change your posture, it takes a very short amount of time to effective change in, in your hormones and your, your neuropathway patterns. You can, you can do that in a matter of just a, a couple of minutes. But what you experienced on this greater experiential level is your practices over time allowed you to be in a position to be present in joy. I Easier like said that. than done, right? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it is, but I do like that because, um, I mean, yeah, you're right. It does. I, I was thinking about, you know, just that's just with everybody. You do create more stress to yourself, like what Ron was doing kind of back then, which is kind of going back and forth when, you know, you're, you're sort of almost like in a living in an autopilot. You're so used to like looking a certain way and um, and make sure that you don't eat too much or a little too much of certain certain, let's say, desserts or food. But um, but if you do live in a if you do at that moment live in that moment. And just just live your life just right there, just at that moment. Aren't you more, much more happier? Like, didn't you feel the difference? Honestly, for my, I'll go ahead, go ahead, Jesse. That's exactly it. That's the reduction of the friction. That's exactly it. I was going to say, on top of that, I felt much better. Just that friction reduction, just like you mentioned, that's my new word of the day. Friction reduction is I felt much more in tune, enjoying the moment. Right, because I had this vision when I first went to Hawaii like six years ago. Oh, everybody in Hawaii has six pack abs in good shape. I can make sure you do the same thing. I went there, I only saw one, maybe, person out of the thousands I saw. So it really didn't matter. But it feels much better, like like um, Jesse said, being 
having less friction and that push and a pull in both directions because it almost feels like a split in half. I want to have dessert, but yet I want to have six pack abs. You're constantly of that friction where you just you just don't go anywhere and you feel very frustrated. And that's what I want to ask Jesse. So we talk about health and embodied movement. Can you define any symptoms? Like how do people know when that friction is occurring? Yeah, so this can show up in a lot of different ways. Um, One of the most common things that I hear are uh, is tension, physical tension in the body. If you kind of feel yourself in the moment, so I'm picturing Gloria there with the funnel cake, and like, oh, like you just, you know, you kind of like tense up, like, oh, I know I shouldn't, and there's there's a physical tension that that happens you know you might your shoulders might come up to your ears a little bit or you might feel your your stomach pull in a little bit um a lot of times people get desensitized to this level of tension because let's face it life is tense we we all are kind of walking around with a heightened level of what i call resting tension tension that's kind of always there until you know, you go get that deep tissue massage or you really, you know, someone says, hey, put your shoulders down and you do. And you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize they were up. But so, so tension in the body, you know, physical, muscular holding that level of tension, that is a a pretty obvious and accessible uh, symptom. Uh, Another one is a, a feeling of anxiety. And I know, unfortunately, anxiety is so common right now. And I think anxiety is a symptom of this friction as well when we're, when we're pulled in multiple directions. And this could be something, and I, I don't want to, I was about to say something as simple as the funnel cake, and I, I, I don't want to make that uh, very elementary because, you know, people's relationships with food can be very complex and can have a lot of, um, you know, ripple effects in, in how that affects somebody's physical and mental and emotional health. But all the way down to, you know, fear of walking into a crowd, you know, like it's at the fair, fair tonight. Yeah, you know, the crowd of people. Yeah, a crowd of people, you yeah. know, especially, you know, in, in times like this and that kind of thing, you know, that, that friction. So there might be a level of anxiousness or anxiety where you feel like, okay, I know I should be feeling calm or I want to be feeling calm and right now I'm not feeling calm. So that's being pulled in two different directions that could show up as anxiety. Um, Other symptoms, I mean, it could be uh, physical pain, either acute or chronic. You know, we, it's, I think everybody kind of has a level of understanding now that we store our emotions in our physical body. And, you know, if you've been around on this, this planet in your body for a while, you've probably developed some habits around that. So whether that's like chronic neck pain or low back pain, or, I mean, it could even be, you know, a, a this spot that kind of feels weird, like, oh, who, how would I know that, you know, my, that friction is is showing up as pain there. A lot of times if there had been a previous injury or something happened to create physical pain and there's still inflammation in that area or scar tissue, the stress of that friction being pulled in a few different directions, that stress, the the biochemicals that you pump out, like cortisol, adrenaline, et cetera, these, these things can, if there's any inflammation anywhere in your body, kind of fire that up. So you might feel an old injury flare up or, or a condition, an underlying condition flare up when there's that level of stress around the friction. My goal with this whole embodied movement approach is to be able to teach people exactly this, teach people, oh, when there is a discomfort in my body, what is it teaching me about myself? Um, I'll say the, the, the last, I mean, I could go on about the symptoms, but one, one notable one is also numbness. 
lack of sensation, lack of feeling, a feeling of being kind of cut off and and not feeling. So the other thing that embodied movement can do is to sensitize you, to allow you to gain access to the sensations, even if the sensations under that numbness are ones of pain or discomfort, they can be guides to help you know where and how to reduce the friction, to come back to a place of feeling more yourself and true and whole. Um, So numbness, pain, anxiety, anything in there. Mm. Wow, that's a lot. The numbness part, that's... um... I'm just thinking of if, um, symptoms that I may have had. And and actually what really struck me right now is old injuries that may um, or you may feel again later on. So that's, that's actually, that's good to know. That's pretty, that's new to me. That's, um, yeah, that's yeah, pretty our, our body systems, you know, they're, they're, they don't operate in separation, you know, if you have an old injury and you went through whatever healing process, whether it was, you know, a good one and you were all healed up or or one that became kind of long-term and needed some more care and kind of nags at you, our body systems always operate all together. So in finding, you know, where where in my body is this pain? Where is it coming from? What does it have to do with you know, you might, you might feel an old injury flare up and just think, oh, I did something wrong or Mm -hmm. I overdid it at the gym or, you know, when I was in Cabo and I was partying, (laughs) 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 whatever, you know, and you might not realize, oh, this is actually tied to an emotional stress I'm feeling. And then emotional stress is actually just creating what, what the body does around stress. And that, is heightening inflammation. So even if it's an old injury that you're kind of categorizing as like, oh, that was just a physical experience and keeping it in that category, this this level of exploration kind of invites us to look at how everything is tied together. Mm-hmm. It's, and, and that's another thing too, is many of us don't realize that what can stress really do to our body or what can even you know, just having anxiety outside or around certain things, what that can even just do to our body. And we don't realize that. I'm glad that you're, you're actually, we're discussing that and you're explaining that because it's exactly what you said. Many people will feel that they either just overworked out at the gym. So they're feeling, you know, let's say their arms are hurting, their shoulders are hurting, or they hurt their knee because they're doing a certain exercise, which is like me. I, I My old injuries will come back or will pop up because I thought, oh, okay, I just kind of overdanced <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. My knee can't handle all that. But it might have been a cost of, you know, the stress that I was going through the, the past week or something. Um, but I'm glad that you're, you know, explaining that. And I do have a question. What, why is it, um, why is it important? for us to um, recognize the symptoms? So one of the things I have found is when people are, you know, every day trying to do your best, whether it's just baseline trying to get through the day or you are on kind of a self-improvement journey and you're wanting to, you know, really improve your quality of life, a lot of times we end up kind of shooting ourselves in the foot, even if we are quote unquote, doing all the right things or, or incorporating other, other positive moves in life. Like let's say we've you know improved our diet or we've started a meditation practice, or we've, we've gone and, you know, hired a, a counselor or a therapist or a coach and getting, getting that help and support we need. If the body is firing signals on an old operating system. And what I mean by that is you've been through what you've been through in life. You know, let's say you did have a funky relationship with food in the past, and that's kind of created an imprint. 
or you had a funky relationship with body image, or you've been through some sort of event that's created some trauma patterns in your body, a trauma response. And let's say you're good, you know, you're, you're okay now, you're, you've improved your relationship with food or your body image, you, you're out of that situation that created that, that trauma trigger in the first place. However, some of your body systems are still operating in that mode. So even if it's under the surface and not showing up in the, your day-to-day life, those systems are still firing. So they're still kind of reacting below your level of consciousness. Maybe sometimes, you know, sometimes you might be conscious of, of it as well. But why this is important is if you are going to try to do your best every day, maybe make some improvements in your life, and you're working on an old operating system, you're always going to kind of either end up back where you were or end up frustrated running into the same problems over and over again, whether they're, you know, mental frustrations or uh, sabotaging habits or, or physical ailments until or unless you, we'll keep with this metaphor, upgrade the operating system, change those firing patterns. And oftentimes, you know, and this is this is one of the places I got stuck before, where I was I was in a place where I had, you know, improved my life situations. I, I was living in a kind of survival mode environment for a long time, and so I changed the situation so that I I wasn't in in fear of danger anymore. However, my my body systems were so trained to operate in survival mode that even though I was doing my meditation and doing my, you know, positive affirmations and, you know, hydrating and getting good sleep and eating good food, my, my nervous system patterns were still firing like, like that danger, like on high alert, right? To, to be on alert for that danger. And it took retraining my nervous system physically through physical movement, retraining my nervous system to switch those gears, to upgrade my operating system so that everything else I was doing, all of the meditation, the mindfulness, the the you know, good nutrition, the hydration, all of it could function. You know, all of those were great commands, right? Great input to be to be putting in into my being. But they were commands going into an outdated operating system, one that was malfunctioning, so to speak. So this is important because, look, none of us have extra time or energy to waste right now on feeling cruddy, on shooting ourselves in the foot when either we're just trying to make it through the day best we can or make some positive improvements and and feel better day to day, get better results out of life, better quality of life day to day. We need to upgrade our operating systems. That's what this is. And I know what I think about the same thing is, um, I think about this is in order to be, in order to go or be, or do something different, you have to change something about yourself, daily routines or life to be somewhere different. And it reminds me of an old operating system. If I operate on old software, you're going to have the same results. Like literally, I will if I had Windows ninety five, which was more popular in the nineties, and now it's, it's twenty twenty two almost. My computer be very slow. Probably can't work on some new software. I have no updates. I'm just the same old person, and that's that's kind of I'm laughing about it to myself because man, I'm thinking about myself. The old operating system I had a year ago, two years ago, sorry about scarcity, working seven to ten to fifteen days straight. When I have my personal training business, not taking a day off, working 10 to 15 hours a day straight. So 10 to 15 hours a day, every day, is because I was operating on a scarcity mentality. So inherently now, when I transition out of training to mentor, mentor, life coaching, and mindfulness coaching, I can't work 10 to 15 hours a day. It's just impossible for me to do it now. Matter of fact, four to five hours a day is probably good enough because I have new software and new learnings. So I, that's my biggest takeaway is get rid of that old download software. So with that being said, Jay, Jesse, with our, our time getting close, um, 
I hopefully you come back for episode two um, because I want to talk more about this because this is so intriguing and there's so much more information. Um, What do you think about that? I think you just hit the nail on the head right now with what you just said. This is about efficiency. I like to say, you know, creating an energy efficient body so that we can feel better with less drain, less effort. And a lot of the drains come from the energy that goes into what our body is doing on a moment to moment basis. And we just, we haven't cleaned it up from input that's happened in our life, whether it's just, you know, the, the stress of, you know, our, our daily schedules to, to the really, really hard things that happen. And when we can learn to, they're hacks, right? Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's simple. If you're like, oh, I've got, I got to get a new computer or I got to update my operating system. You just do it. And then all of a sudden you're smooth sailing. These these physical techniques, and we can talk some about this in the the next episode here. Um, they're really efficient. That is exactly what is it about. What it's about is it's finding the right buttons to push, so you can just make that switch and get a different result. I love that yeah. physical techniques. Yeah. I like that. Let's let, you know what. Let's say that for next episode. Yeah. Is there anything Gloria you'd like to add to this? Um, no. I can, can. I just would like to add, can it, Gloria, and then I'd love to hear what you had to say. Um, if this is all kind of like, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> this, is this is, and you know, the, even the word embodiment. I think we talked about this last time. You know, I think embodiment is going to become the new mindfulness, right? So if this is like. Okay, this is wacky. Like, hey, that's okay. Stick with us. You know, we're going to we're going to be talking more about like really bringing this into real life and and making this practical, but just um you know, know that you you have tools literally at your literal fingertips to to help you feel better. I totally agree. Wouldn't agree more. I don't have anything else to add because I would like to hear more from Jesse. I am as well learning here. I, I mean, listening to you while I was listening to you, um, I do think back of, you know, certain situations myself and how it's making sense to me in a way. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. I love that. Yeah. And Jesse, where can people find you again? If people, if people didn't hear it the first time embodiedmovementtraining.com is my website. All of my contact information and social links are over there. And I do have a contact form. So if something hit you or you have questions or you just want to share some of your story, I love uh, I love reading people's stories and hearing people's stories. I do read every email that comes into my inbox. I think one of the benefits of being more present and embodied is better connecting and relating with each other. That's something that's very important to me. So I would love to hear anything that stood out. So just embodied movement training altogether.com. Awesome. You guys hear that out there. Sounds we good. can find Jesse. I think she said on our first episode that she reads all the messages. So you actually get in mm-hmm. live person, not a bot. So it's always a good thing. And if you guys, it's like she said, if you guys are kind of lost, like what is she saying? This is wacky. This is woo woo, whatever. Please hold on to your seats. Strap in. When we more. come back for episode two, there's more to come. We will put all the pieces of the puzzle together so it's digestible. So, Jesse, thanks again for being on our podcast, Life's a Shuffle. And this is the first episode, but a new beginning. Thanks, yes. guys. Yes, again, thanks, Jesse, for um, joining us today. And until the next episode, um, again, for our listeners out there, thank you um, for listening to another episode of, actually, I was going to say episode, Life's a Shuffle, but this is our episode one with Jesse Lucas on Embodied Movement. You got it right. Thanks, everybody, for listening.